do you think about uh, the providers and the provisioners that Terraform gives you? Uh, do you think it's more than sufficient or do you think there are a lot more providers that would come up in the next few uh, years? I think uh, uh, today I just have researched on Terraform Marketplace. They are just come up with uh, new additions. And I think the actual Terraform is really open source and it is open source on GitHub. There's a lot of people who just contribute to it. So uh, I can say that uh, there's a lot of come to their provisioning and to their plugins. Yeah, I'm uh, actually confident on it. <laughs> okay, very nice. Because, very of nice. The, because of this open source. Because, you know, yeah. the, when things are really open source, they usually grab uh, individually, like we have open source. Other tools are, are open source, which I use in my daily life. And uh, Terraform is one of them. And uh, really just uh, come up with uh, really with great uh, updations, like they create up with new features. And, and I love it about this Terraform. So how, uh, CloudFormation, is, I think, is not open source. It's a closed source by AWS. It's, so it's they, completely with AWS. Yeah. It's, it's completely yeah. with AWS. So yeah. yeah, so pretty much I will have to create all these resources that you're talking about through Lambda functions, right? Because Lambda functions allow us that flexibility of talking to other APIs and so on, which are yes. outside of the AWS ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So that's the only way that I can think of in terms of creating something like some resource in Datadog, you know, or some resource in Neuralic, which probably uh, Terraform already has a provider for. So that's where the flexibility of Terraform comes into play. So we are actually one down on cloud formation and one up on Terraform. <laughs> uh, Terraform, yeah, of course, but we can do it too using cloud formation, but we use Lambda, we need some triggers, third parties, permissions, and this is really time taking, really time taking yeah. process. And usually we, we are in DevOps, so we usually try to save our time. We know to be depend on third parties because of the security privileges. So. I think yeah, there's a one, there's a one and zero on the cloud formation side. <laughs> of course, of course, of course. So when we talk a little bit more in detail, you know, with the recent versions of Terraform, uh, we have something which uh, you know allows us to specify some constraints for some variables. So we can specify use only this, 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 this AMIs, or probably use only this set of uh, VM instance types. Uh, you can do some constraints on your variables. Now, what do you think about that aspect? Yeah, actually, uh, I'm I'm not mo more sure about this subject you are talking about, but yeah, uh, we are limited here uh, in Terraform that we need to be use this A V about this M E and this type. Yeah, here we just have some Terraform, but uh, I don't know about this subject more, so might be I yeah. can't explain in detail about this one. Cool. I mean, like, because when we think about cloud formation, I think we have been having this for a long time in terms of constraints uh, that we can set on our on all of our variables as allowed values. And we can mention that only you can take a value only from this allowed value. So that gives us the power and flexibility that, you know, you don't want someone in your team to go ahead and launch a virtual machine instance type, which is really big, right? So. It, it, it allows you to create something as a wrapper called as a module, and they can only specify values which can only be taken from that module, but from only that specific list of constraints, right? And for Terraform also, you have this module concept, which is for CloudFormation, it came out very recently. It was not there for a long time, and CloudFormation brought out modules, and I was really happy that they brought it out because we could uh, you know, compete with something with the likes of Terraform. What do you think about Terraform modules? What do you think is the advantage or the power behind creating Terraform modules? Yeah, I think uh, uh, in more in the interviews, people really ask about the Terraform modules. The, the reason behind is that uh, uh, you create a group and you can use it anywhere in the world. Uh, so you don't need to create again and again for, you know, it's really uh, you save your time and uh, with the help of Terraform modules, you can link the uh, function uh, modules with each other. So they're really in groups. Uh, so this is actually the power of Terraform modules. That, uh, uh, how can we master Terraform? Yeah, this is actually the beauty of Terraform modules that you can group a, group the functions and you can execute them. So the, uh, for example, if you, need, uh, if you need some volumes, you need an instance machine, so you just create a module and link them with each other. So 
So okay. the, uh, this become a code beauty, and the other thing is uh, Terraform modules that uh, uh, they can really help to understand it, what's going on in the board. But if you doesn't yeah. use the Terraform modules, it's really create complexity. So I think yeah. uh, everyone who sh uh, who is a beginner should learn about what are Terraform modules because. Uh, ninety percent of interview when it's come to DevOps, usually people ask about that of the modules. Was it and how to use them? Yeah, I mean that that's uh, pretty beautifully said. You know that Terraform modules are one of the best practices of uh, Terraform. Like everyone should start writing modules. And Adil, could you tell us like where could we find modules that are already written by the community? And is it possible for us to use those modules in our respective on code? on GitHub? <laughs> <laughs> GitHub, <laughs> GitLab yeah. too, but uh, GitHub is actually one of the best, and uh, a lot of people. Terraform is actually on uh, GitHub, so I usually recommend people that uh, a lot of people have medium blogs, and they really give out that. Uh, uh, I can share my medium blogs with them that uh, how to start Terraform with AWS. So this is yeah. my source code for fork it, and then use it for yourself. So a lot of people, I think, they do it. Uh, for free on GitHub, so they can easily learn for them. But they need an AWS account, which have uh, uh, they have a AWS account which have a root permission, so they can create a new one with their uh, accordingly. Like uh, I want to create an S3 bucket, so the new user have only permission to S3 bucket. So don't try to use your AWS account. <laughs> so <laughs> AWS root account actually that's not a good practice. I always yeah. said people in my sessions that don't try to use your root account. And AWS also set up this because sometimes your uh, in the code you just really forget about your AWS secrets and AWS key and secret code and AWS access key. So another person can access it and this can be a really really harmful. Code. But sometimes AWS will send you out that hey on GitHub on this repository you just have open AWS access key which is in use so delete it. So this is a beauty of AWS. Yeah, I mean that's really I never nice. did so it, but one yeah. I never did it, but my friend friend just said me that he just uh, you know uh, uh, he just actually uh, put their credential in the GitHub code, and I just recommend we, him that we have a GitHub secrets. You can add them yeah. to your GitHub secrets, and yeah. then uh, also we have Terraform Cloud. With the help yeah. of Terraform Cloud, we can create a workspace, and we can also version controlling it our source yeah. code. And uh, also, I just wrote a blog on it that uh, uh, how to uh, manage uh, your AWS infrastructure as your infrastructure using Terraform Cloud and GitHub Actions. So this is actually oh. the beauty of Terraform. Now you can manage your source code, your infrastructure using Terraform Cloud and, and GitHub. Oh, that's very nice. That's very nice. I mean, that's a great suggestion for our uh, end users over here. Because uh, before we go on to security, you know, in regards to cloud formation, uh, the reason why we write modules at the end of the day is because we want some best practices to be put into the business logic of that module, right? So we don't want someone to go ahead and um, insert a value, uh, something like a secret. We would possibly have it in yeah. the business logic. So probably to randomly generate a secret and store it in secrets manager and things like that. And the best thing about cloud formation and its modules is that I can also use a different service of AWS called a service catalog, where wherever I write cloud formation templates and I write it as modules, I can create it as a product with a portfolio in a service catalog. And anyone who launches that product and has the privileges to launch that product can only enter the values of the variables that can be allowed to enter, right? So you have some really nice best practices. For example, if suppose I would like to enforce 20 tags on all of my resources, I would put in that business logic into my cloud formation module. I wouldn't allow anyone to go ahead and add any extra tags or probably overwrite any existing tags, I would have all of my necessary tags written inside my module itself. So when the resource is created, it already has 20 tags. So this kind of a strategy is really, really nice when we work with modules. 